Each year at Convocation, I love to recognize and thank you for your hard work, the work of a talented, high-performing, multi-constituent team. Please accept my sincere thanks to each of you. Convocation is also the perfect opp opportunity for all of us to look ahead at our priorities and our goals for the next academic year. As has been true in all of the past six convocations that I have led, the state of our college is strong and work, rem work remains. This work will require sustained teamwork, personal sacrifices, continued frugality, and being open to more change and new efficiencies. This will be difficult and rewarding work. As we approach our college's 50th anniversary next year, we will have faced real challenges. We have been working hard, sludging through multi-year plans and planning processes, and in recent years, we have had fewer easy wins and more complex issues to address. And while we may feel hip deep in solving these problems together, we are getting this college caught up after years of relative inertia. The hard work continues. As the person who can best see the vision over the horizon, I can tell you that we are indeed making progress and we are indeed getting there, I promise. And yet the goals that we have set have been unquestionably complicated by three years of significantly strained budgets, but we have adjusted and we have planned our way out of a $3 million budget crunch. And this year, I want to employ a new metaphor as we talk about in great detail where we are and where we are headed and what we are experiencing at UC Blue Ash College, as well as what is to come. Let me, for a change, speak in the love language of my biology professors and focus my remarks this morning on our major metamorphosis as a college. As all of you know, metamorphosis is a major transformation. Some argue the most profound of all acts. As famous cinematographer Louis Schwartzberg said, metamorphosis has always been the greatest symbol of change. Imagine that you could be a caterpillar one moment and a butterfly the next. And so we are undergoing a change this significant here at UC Blue Ash College. I believe that years from now, we will look back at this 10 year time frame and see our movement from caterpillar to cocoon to butterfly. We have already changed and we will continue to change significantly together. Let's first envision the metamorphosis of a butterfly. Ready biologists? In the popular science magazine, Scientific American, Ferris Jabur writes, as children, many of us learn about the wondrous process of which a caterpillar morphs into a butterfly. The story usually begins with a very hungry caterpillar hatching from an egg. The caterpillar, or larva, stuffs itself with leaves, often hundreds more than its weight, growing plumper and plumper and longer and longer through a series of molts in which it sheds its skin. One day, the caterpillar stops eating. It hangs upside down from a twig or a leaf, and then it spins itself a silky cocoon or molts into a shiny chrysalis. Within its protective casing, the caterpillar radically transforms its body, eventually emerging as a butterfly. But what does this radical transformation entail? How does a caterpillar rearrange itself into a butterfly? What happens inside that cocoon? Well, let me warn you, it isn't always pretty. First, the caterpillar digests itself, releasing enzymes to dissolve all of its tissues. So if you were to cut open a cocoon at just the right time, nutritive caterpillar soup would ooze out. It's true. But, <laughs> but the contents of the pupa are not entirely an amorphous mess. Certain highly organized groups of cells known as imaginal discs survive the digestive process. Looking backwards, before they hatched, when a caterpillar was still inside that egg, it grew imaginal discs of each of the adult body parts it will need as a mature butterfly, discs for its eyes, its wings, its legs, and so on. Anyhow, back to the story, once a caterpillar has disintegrated in that soup, all of its tissues except for the imaginal discs inside the cocoon. Those discs use the protein-rich soup all around them to fuel the rapid cell division required to form the wings and the antennae and the legs and the eyes and all of the other features of an adult butterfly. 
the imaginal disk might begin with only 50 cells and increase to more than 50,000 cells by the end of metamorphosis. It's amazing, really. And when the time is right, the butterfly wriggles out and shows its beauty and its vibrant colors, demonstrating an airborne grace totally unconceivable before when it was only a caterpillar. Friends, let's talk about the major metamorphosis of three aspects of this college. First, our facilities. Second, our reputation. And third, our student success mission. Each area is undergoing a metamorphosis. All three are well underway in their separate collegiate cocoons, complete with imaginal disks. I'm working this metaphor. <laughs> Things that we will know that we will see and aspects we cannot yet see, and what sometimes feels like a mess or like the ooze of caterpillar soup. Some of our transformation is unquestionably messy, frustrating, time-consuming, ugly, even gross. Let's begin with facilities. <laughs> when I arrived here in 2010, I found a college with significantly deferred maintenance, over 70 million to be precise. The facility was too small, and run down. There were dark, worn out, and odorous trailers where students waited in the rain and in the cold to enter. In several of our buildings, there were raccoons, mice, birds, and bugs in the ceiling. And yes, some were dead, some were alive. I said, it was gross. It was literally the wild west of facilities out here. There were not enough faculty offices. There were not enough classrooms or meeting spaces. The carpet was stained and worn. The classroom furniture was, and in some cases still is, archaic. The classroom IT was, IT was inadequate or non-existent. Students lined the hallway floors because we had very few places for them to sit or to gather or to relax. And we had a small, inadequate concession stand for food. Oh, unless you think I've forgotten about the HVAC, uh, what it was and what it still is in months, it still is woefully an antiquated, leaving many of us to experience swings in temperatures in Munts Hall from the degrees of 50s to the degrees of 80s. I think you can agree buildings should not have seasons. <laughs> <laughs> like a caterpillar, the college's physical campus was merely inching along, just slowly moving to meet the physical needs of the college. And so thankfully, this UCBA college campus caterpillar has entered into its cocoon phase through countless major renovations and new building planning process, uh, processes and phases, design phases and construction phases. I'll tell you what, we're getting there. The, the drawings and the plans are our imaginal disks, and we know what this mature butterfly will look like when it is fully developed. And our facility is really evolving nicely. As you have heard this morning, we have put, a long, put together a long but productive six phases of renovation ahead of months, and the classrooms will be attractive spaces for active learning with state-of-the-art furniture and technology. We still have many opportunities for each of you to have input so that we get it all just right. We have also built new features into the building, as you heard earlier this morning, more common space, an atrium to improve our entry experience, along with being a large event space, and a new and improved student success center. We will also have much improved series of faculty office suites where community, equity, efficiency, and beauty will coincide. And our, our metamorphosis of our new building is also underway. The steel frames are up. This building's imaginal disks, we can see them, and we can begin to picture what that building will look like and what it will feel like. We look forward to its opening next summer. Second, let's move to talk about the needed metamorphosis of our reputation. Metamorphosis means transformation in Greek, and it's essential for our reputation to transform, to acknowledge the many changes that we have ushered in over the past few years. However, you and I, not just I, you and I have a role to play in transforming our reputation. This fall, we will work as a college team, all of us, to begin to be more strategic in the messages that we share about ourselves and our college with our internal publics, or in other words, our UC colleagues. Several of us have noticed one conversation at a time that many of our UC colleagues don't know who we are and what we do well. We have heard false statements representing ignorance and outdated information. Some have opinions without facts. Some have baseless knowledge. 
Some opine about what it's like here and they've never even been here. So we welcome more of our Clifton and Claremont counterparts to meet on our campus, to spend time here, to see what it is like for themselves and to learn for themselves firsthand what great things we have to offer. And we will share this great news about our college and be more consistent in our messaging with the goal of making it clear who we are and what we do well. Reputational lags are common, but our reputation within the university needs our immediate collective attention. We will follow up with more information about next steps. We need to make sure that our UC colleagues see us for the butterfly that we have become. Third, we are undergoing a major metamorphosis of our student success mission and how we best serve our students here at UC Blue Ash, which will lead us to change the way we recruit, the way we work, how we teach, lead, research, think, and more. I am genuinely proud of the progress that we have made in addressing the inherent challenges of our student success mission. We want the best possible student success outcomes for our students. More persistence, more retention, more transitions, more graduations. We are trying currently to address and solve the most common student problems, where nearly one-fifth of our student population struggles every single year. And we have begun to tackle problems with our CPAS program. This multi-constituent work is some of the very best teamwork I've ever seen. We are redefining open access with CPAS. It just means access with proper supports and a real chance for success. Access and success. But when they fail, and we can see already that some will, it is the right thing to move swiftly to say goodbye to students who are not prepared, who are not motivated to succeed. The days of taking their money for three semesters and placing them in significant debt while they earn a 0.0, .0 GPA are over. We are working our way towards serving a col college population who can and will be successful. We're not there yet. But again, the imaginal disks are there. This student success issue is at the very heart of this cocoon mess of our college. It is gooey and it's ugly sometimes. Sometimes the data doesn't explain enough for us to understand it, but we need to keep figuring it out. We will strategically tackle these student issues in the most data-driven, high-tech, high-touch way possible. And we will tackle the issues as a college-wide team. We will need more software tools to simplify our touches and make better use of our time. We will also work to solve these problems together and prepare to emerge someday having solved it, having built something truly beautiful. Building a new reality takes work with a lot of really smart people. Luckily, we have a lot of really smart people. Year after year, I have seen hundreds of you step up, keep doing it, and find ways to entice those handful of faculty and staff who are either absent today or who are often absent back into the work, entice them back into the work at hand. Those missing faculty have abused the flexibility of their schedules, leaving you to pull your weight and theirs. We cannot afford to have some faculty or staff opt out. We have to all contribute to make this work. And so for those of you who are here and are stepping up, we'll need to find some more time for you to do this important strategic student success work. These goals will require us to grow even more student-centered and even sometimes less employee-centered. So once again, I encourage our faculty and our staff to right-size the number of committees and the number of members on committees or merge committees wherever possible. We need to have the courage to stop doing things. To the faculty, I implore you to engage in committees and service contributions that support our college's priorities, such as mentoring students, supporting undergraduate research, supporting the preparation for HLC accreditation, proposing new baccalaureate programs, creating more online courses and programs, completing program reviews, sharing leadership roles, and growing the unit head and director succession uh, pipelines, and many other priorities. 
These efforts need your valued participation, not the few committees that struggle to build meaningful agendas. It pains me to hear junior faculty complain about being pressured to engage in standing committees that don't tap into their talents, but simply check a box for RPT. Some senior faculty have told me quite candidly that the excessive committee structure stems from a time that the college's administration could not lead or manage well. Times have changed and now we have a professional, highly competent administrative team that works with your input and with multi-constituent teams. Let's heed the advice of our junior and senior faculty and closely review our college and our de de departmental committee and subcommittee structures again. Let's merge them, let's slim them once more. I will be reading all of the RPT dossiers looking for meaningful service that is at the center of the college's current work Please, no dossier filler. Shared governance should come from serving the college and its students in active and currently needed ways that support the plans of, that all of us have authored, authored and approved together. We can get this right together in ways that honor, even heighten, our shared governance. Next, for us to serve our students, we need to delve into more distance learning. We have been thoughtful and we have set our standards and our policies. And now as a college, we need to set some specific goals to move more online. Should we ignore distance learning? Should we only tiptoe into it? To a certain extent, we've done that through fits and starts. Our online offerings and enrollments are half of what they were three years before. And we've been writing big checks to Claremont College Catch and ANS because our students have voiced their preference for some online courses by taking millions of dollars of theirs. We need to honor our students' preferences and our prospective students' preferences, and we need to be realistic. We know that we cannot refuse transfer credits from online courses that they take at other institutions or at other UC colleges. So instead, we need to be realistic and we need to set some goals for our own growth in high quality online educational offerings. As we enter into our final steps of our next UCBA strategic plan, and as we address our goals in distance learning, let's make them with our eyes wide open about the reality of our on online enrollments. We either take significantly more courses and the appropriate programs online, or we will need fewer full-time faculty in many departments. Almost every department needs to consider how they will create online courses that are outstanding, and in a few cases, outstanding online programs. Please be objective and honest about online teaching versus personal preferences or biases. There is research out there that shows that online teaching can be as good or better than in-person teaching. We don't need everyone to teach online, and we don't need everything to be taught online, but we do need w willing, interested, and talented faculty to teach online for our students. The technologies available today are remarkable, and the students demand online learning. And whenever we take our college's education online, I will personally commit resources and new outcomes-based incentives to take those courses online, as well as make sure that we are in line with HLC's expectations. Oh, and one more point about online. Some have commented over the years about how our average age student has decreased by about 10 years, from about 34 to about 24, over the last decade and a half. Do you want to know why? It's because we're not very online and our competitors are, and they are meeting the non-traditional students' demand for online learning convenience. Please also remember that the number of our state's high school graduates will hit an all-time low in 2017, so we cannot rely on our 18-year-olds only. It is simple, we need to go more online in various programs or we'll have shrinking budgets and all of the negative personnel actions that accompany them. Let's strengthen our enrollments, uh, in these offerings and we can be in a much better position to hire more faculty and staff instead. Now, as you prepare for this fall, please be mindful of the fact that we are living through extraordinary contextual challenges. This fall, we will experience the Tenzing trial in November. Additionally, we have the single most contentious presidential election and the least satisfied electorate that I've ever witnessed, also in November. These are difficult times on the heels of a sobering summer, one that has been full of painful news events that have us all feeling saddened and shocked by a litany of terrorist attacks, 
atrocious acts and killings within our own country. We are living in a time that we need to remind one another that black lives matter, a belief that should be self-evident in 2016, because my goodness, black lives matter, and yet sometimes it doesn't seem that evident to everyone. It is painful. And we are also living in a time when our children and we are also learning to learn how to run and hide and fight. So we are all prepared in all of our environments, all of our everyday environments for active shooters and terrorists. Friends, in this ugliness and madness, each of us has the opportunity to create a reprieve at UC Blue Ash. We can create a peaceful place, a warm cocoon. You and I can create relationships with one another and with our students. We can have special conversations. We can create educated, thoughtful, just, and kind responses to these horrible events in our world to help our students and colleagues to process our thoughts and all of our feelings in constructive ways. And we must do that together. Let's help one another by being the world that we want to live in. In this metamorphosis of the college, I also already see brilliance. I see signs of brilliance, signs of beauty, signs of grace that are coming along with that beautiful but butterfly. I see brilliance in our quality initiative action teams who have been leading our college and improving all of us. I see beauty in the faculty pilot who are piloting the developmental math that has been redesigned and who are working to reconceive our mathematics sequence. I see grace in our excellent tutors who are so patient, so devoted to our students' learning, and now they are using TutorTrack to better gauge usage patterns so that we can serve them better. And ask our study skills folks who are very excited to pilot a program called OnCourse in our study skill centers and courses this year to meet our students' needs. I see beauty in our common hour where we have grown a sense of community with each other and with our students on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12.30 to 1.50, a time without classes, but a time for one another. I see brilliance in our strategic planning committee, one who will finalize our next five-year plan this fall with you. This, thankfully, is a project that will merge our strategic plan, our enrollment management plan, our academic plan, and our quality initiative that's a lot of plans all into one. It will be one ambitious, robust plan. It will simplify our actions and focus all of our attention. Over the horizon, I see beautiful things emerging for this college when we launch our honors program in 2017 and when we require ACT submission, which will all help to shape our future enrollments and increase student success. I also see beauty coming with our laptop initiative, which will launch in 2018, which will narrow the digital divide, providing financial aid for students who need the tools to be successful. We will also raise millions of dollars over the upcoming foundation campaign in scholarships, naming rights, grants, planned gifts, bequests, and more. I ask that you be generous and plan to give to others via UC Blue Ash College. There is beauty in philanthropy. There is beauty all around us. Look around. I see an engaging academic outreach program. It seems like every day of the week, whether it's X for X-ray or UC Smiles, the list is long. More recruitment open houses and new express application events. I see beauty in our dancing student orientation leaders, whose enthusiasm for this college is contagious. An expert orientation team that will lead the largest orientation ever tomorrow. Woo, take your vitamins. We have 225 headed our way tomorrow for a very busy final day. Our kind-hearted one-stop center uh, team who are on the front line every day and especially this year with the Catalyst launch. Launch, not lunch. My mouth is getting dry. <laughs> our ambitious academic advisors are our beautiful thing. They are dramatically changing students' experiences by helping them navigate their majors and their goals. I see beauty in our always welcoming and bright student ambassadors. And I see brilliance in our faculty who are superb teacher scholars, who are knowledgeable and passionate and caring. And I see quiet, understated beauty in all of our colleagues who work hard behind the scenes to make all of this possible or better. They are answering phones. They are ordering supplies. They are managing our contracts and our payroll. They lead people. They lead projects. They raise money. They prepare laboratories and classrooms. They write grant proposals, provide administrative support, clean, uh, police, paint, repair, maintain, 
mow, plan, analyze, set up, tear down, and so much more. This is a busy, special college full of beauty, but none of us can ever be too busy with each of our roles or our assigned tasks to lose sight of our top priority, the major metamorphosis of our students. Please remember that their transformation is all of our life's work. Their transformation is the culmination of all of our work. It is brilliant, beautiful work. And your next opportunities to be brilliant and beautiful are upon us. Students are flooding our campus now, and in six days will begin their classes. As usual, they will bring their dreams, their doubts, and their complicated lives. And each day, I hope that you agree that we are lucky to have a real chance to make a difference in their lives. Please prioritize our students and their needs every day. I will end as I began with a scientific metaphor. Scientist Elizabeth Satoris said, the caterpillar is a necessary stage but becomes unsustainable once its job is done. There is no point in being angry with it and there is no need to worry about defeating it. The task is to focus on building the butterfly, the success of which depends on powerful, positive, and creative efforts in all aspects of society and alliances built among those engaged in them. And so it is here at UC Blue Ash. The primary task is to focus on building the student. Our success depends on the powerful, positive, and creative efforts of all of our faculty, staff, and students. And, please note this, their alliances built among those engaged in them. Their alliances built among those engaged in them. Believe in what I see so clearly from my view. I have the best vantage point of this entire college now and where I see us headed. And I see us becoming a great big beautiful butterfly of a college, a brilliant monarch butterfly, graceful, colorful, one that flies without effort. We can soar together and when we do, we will be prouder than ever of our students and how we became the college that figured out how to best support their students' successful metamorphosis. Join me in this ma major metamorphosis. The work begins today. Thank you very much. <laughs>